I'll start the recording. That's right. The recording is in progress, and uh, we are uh, on, and uh, I think we're doing fine. All righty. Okay. Uh, this is, uh, you know, this uh, in the beginning, I have to, I have, I have a problem where I have to really sign on earlier. I, I, it's too much to explain to you. I'm not going to do it. Hello. Welcome to our pop-up show. This is our little pop-up show. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the pop-up show. Are those lights too bright? Let me see here. Let me just uh, turn this um, uh, here and see what happens here. If I turn the light, nah, uh, nah, I like that. Okay. Anyway, we got all our people. Wait, God, we got a lot of them, too. So let me let me get to the, um, let me get to the uh, panel here. Uh, let me see here. Admit all. Here we go. There we go. There we go. There's Marjorie Miller. Andrew Deutsch is there. Jeff Stein is there. Edward Berger is there. Len LaFrisco is there. Uh, Paul Levin is there. Uh, uh, let me see here. Um, Marjorie is around here somewhere. Jeff Stein is there. Okay. We got everybody. We don't have uh, Shecky's not here today. He said he was going to call, but maybe he didn't remember. That could be. Uh, uh, I could send him an email and say, where are you? So anyway, hello, everybody. How are you? Good. Welcome. Yeah, it's um, it's the Monday after Thanksgiving. Oh. Yeah. Uh, tell them, Marjorie, what happened on our Thanksgiving? Uh-oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> she's, not, she's not feeling well today. Oh. She's here in spite of the fact that she's not feeling well. She was really ill yesterday. Oh. She's not as ill today, and I don't know what she has. But the selfish part of me goes, I hope I don't get it. <laughs> you, you, you hope you don't have to go pick her up at the hospital is what you mean. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, anyway. do that again. Uh, yeah, yeah. Wait a minute. Uh, so, uh, well, I could call Shecky on my phone here and see where he is. But, nah, I won't, I won't do it. Uh, you know, uh, you'll wake him up, huh? You'll wake him up. Well, let me see here. I could do it just on my phone here. Okay, so I go contact. Uh, I think then uh, uh, mobile. Uh, I want him on home. Okay. Let me see here. Let's see here if I can do this. See, <laughs> this will. There we go. Shades of the time I was visiting. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> uh, oh. Are you there, Shecky? No. He's not answering his phone. Hmm. Yeah. Well, I won't let you listen to his message. It, he must. It must be something wrong. Ooh. That worries me. Okay. Well, anyway, here comes Mike Chisholm as well. Mm hmm. And Marjorie's here. Hi, Marjorie. Are you yeah. all right? Yeah, she's. Uh, she, she's. Don't even ask, huh? She she's just showing her face rather than actually doing it, this. Oh, poor thing. <laughs> she was so sick yesterday; it was ridiculous. Uh, but she thought it was her back, and I don't think it was. I we think it might be. It wasn't a flu because she wasn't running a temperature, so we don't know what it was. You know, but. Uh, I hope you're okay, dear. You feeling okay? No. And she doesn't want to say. <laughs> oh, well. Anyway, see, now you got Paula worried, you know? I could be worried. It's okay. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll find out what's going on. Um, is I, 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 Paula Levin, it's funny. Every uh -oh. time I say her name, here's what comes to mind, Paula. And I don't know if this comes to other people's mind, but why didn't they call you Paula 12? Oh. That's not only a bad joke. Uh, it is not even the way that uh, New Yorkers pronounce L-E-V-I-N, Levin. People from Philadelphia pronounce it Levin. And I've always uh, thought of myself as Levin. Levin. Oh, okay. So so the 12th thing or the 10th thing or whatever else uh, never really occurred. <laughs> She's not matzah. It's, 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 it's the same, right, right. It's why, the same tribe, however. Why is that, uh, why, why is it different between Philadelphia and New York? 
Uh, that is something that must be shrouded in great mystery. I have no well, idea. Uh, how do we pronounce S H A P I R O? Yes, yeah, Shapiro, because uh, we, we knew somebody and we called her Shapiro, Judy Shapiro. Yeah, but really? it's Shapiro, isn't it? It's Shapiro. No, it's Shapiro. Listen, <laughs> it's I'm going to stop actually, it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. We went actually, into it. Probably, it probably is Shapiro because um, I think it is uh, Sephardic, which means it's from Spain, which means it's probably Shapiro. Yeah. That's now, my best here, here's the thing. There's a place in town here called what? Shapiro? Oh. Um, what was the name of that place? The eating place, the food place. Fine, fine and Shapiro. Shapiro. And Shapiro. So we fine went into fine, fine and Shapiro's. And as we were leaving, I asked the person at the desk, what is the name of this place? And the person said, fine and Shapiro. Well, he's not from Philadelphia, Alex. <laughs> no. I'm going, going back on mute. No, well, yeah. I, I've never <laughs> in my whole life I've never heard the name Shapiro, Shapiro. Well, you know, uh, uh, the uh, Josh Shapiro is now the governor of Pennsylvania, right? You're right. And and um, I I think part of the reason that 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 he was able to get elected was maybe that people thought his name was Italian. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Or maybe they thought it was Shapiro. I don't know. <laughs> Jeez. But Marjorie, it's Shapiro. Take it from me. <laughs> I know you're all, you know, you're gonna be tough about this. But it 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 it's when you say Levin or Levine, right? Levine usually has an E at the end. E, Levine, Levin or Levin. Yeah. When you say Levin, uh, it's basically a matter of choice. And if if Paula wants to be called Levin. Then I'll call her Levin. Depends on, Levin. What you call depends on what the reason is. Well, wh which one do you want to be called Levin, right? It depends on what you're asking. <laughs> like, uh, yeah. Levin. Levin is my name. What do you identify as? A Levin or a Levine? <laughs> a, Le a Levin. A Levin. I mean, a Levin. <laughs> you're getting me all, all mixed up. <laughs> it's almost as bad as the, the sexual thing that's going on now. Oh, when what? With all the, um, you know, what do, what do you want to be called? You know, I saw, uh, oh, I got, yeah. when I was filling something out, it it had <clears throat> him or her, him, her, he, she, but, you know, whatever. And I'm going, what am I? What am I? I'm just. My pronouns are the and thine. Huh? huh? My pronouns are the and thine. Or <laughs> thou. The that and thine? Oh, or okay. Thou. That was okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's like the, that's like the Quakers. They still do that, don't they? I don't understand. No, what, you know, yeah, I don't understand what it is. But uh, uh, I you have, to, you have to roll with the times, you know, Alex. Yeah, I know, I know. Uh, but I'm, it, you know, it's it's kind of hard, you know, when you reach eighty two and at almost eighty three. I think a couple of weeks I'll be eighty three. You uh, you get a little. I don't know. It, it it gets a little strange to you. You, you get know? a little grouchy. Well, I mean, when I was growing up as kids, it was either he or she. That was it. Right. Um, I often said, I think I've said on here before that I think the way we should let people identify themselves is by their skeletal gender. It's because women do have a different skeleton than men. Okay. For DNA. And if we said if we said skeletal gender, then people don't have to necessarily say, well, yes, I I don't want to say I'm a man just because I have a penis or whatever. But what's your skeletal skeletal gender? And I think that that would solve the whole problem. No, it wouldn't. People would still be arguing about it, you know. So anyway, so what's your gender, yeah. Andrew Deutsch? Mm -hmm. Did you say mine is uh, it and we. It and we. Yeah. <laughs> and, the, and the we is just because it's so much fun. We. So you're an it we. I'm an it we. You're an it we. Oh, boy. That's yeah. uh, I'm a we we. <laughs> I was a the and thou, but uh, Mike stole that. And you can't have two people with the same gender. So. Yeah. Yeah. The new rule. We all have to have our own. I want my own adjectives instead of my own pronouns. Yeah. So anyway, uh, you know, uh, nothing much happening. But the, the biggest story, I think, is what's happening in China now. 
uh, they're finally yes. saying, hey, we're sick of this crap, you know? <laughs> and I always thought it was stupid. Uh, we, we've been to China and we love China. It's a wonderful country and the people in it are wonderful. And it's, uh, uh, you know, it's and it's very modern, you know, and uh, at least in, in Beijing and in those parts of the country. Uh, but it's just I don't understand the Chinese Communist Party and some of their stands on things which go against them even being able to do the kind of commerce they want to do. First it, of all, Alex, they're not. They, they call themselves the Communist Party. There's nothing communist about them. I've right. been but, doing business over there. I've been through modern cities in some of the most rustic rural places of China you could possibly imagine. Well, it's that an was, authoritarian regime. Yeah, They're not communists, just like Fidel Castro was not a communist, just like the, the, the Muslim countries aren't truly Islamic states. They're, they're authoritarian regimes. Like Iraq. And they and they hide under the mask of whatever ideology they want to say. Trump would have been an autocrat also. And oh, he thought he always thought autocrats yeah. were true. I mean, when, when, when we ran this election down in Miami, if you could listen to the alternative language, the Spanish stuff, they were convincing the Cubans that Biden was Castro. And where they failed was they didn't put up the charts showing how similar Trump is to Castro. Trump was Castro. An authoritarian that wanted to hide under a fake ideology. You know what I don't get? Uh, and we don't talk about politics that much on the show, but this isn't really so much politics as it is just the general nature of things. I watch all these uh, uh, right wingers saying the leftist ideology, and I'm going, I don't even think of Biden as a leftist. He's not. You know, he's a centrist. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and which I think is terrible. For part person, because well, that's kind of like I always felt that Unitarians were terrible because really they were going, Well, we're not really Christian, we're not really Jewish, we're this thing, we're halfway in between. And I'm going, Yeah. And the same thing was true of a, a couple other things where they, they always try to be neutral in the middle, and it's so bland and it's so dull. I think it's really a good thing to pick on the Unitarians. Really? Because nobody picks on the Unitarians. You're right. So. You're right. Yeah, what about, about it? On the, it's those religion. goddamn Unitarians. They're God. always, always praying to their unit. So yeah. they're Unitarian. <laughs> and they're such nice people. You know, when I asked somebody. Well, that's just a front. Ask somebody who's a Unitarian. <laughs> I said, you know, where, where are you Jewish? I mean, are you, do you like, are you like Jews or like Christians? <laughs> well, we're right in the middle. Did, did you ever see, Alex, the, the, the Michael Moore movie called Operation Canadian Bacon? Yeah. Where they they pretended the Canadians were were being nice just to mask that they were going to invade, trying to create a war. <laughs> yeah. <It's>, uh... <laughs> well, isn't that whole movie about somebody who decides it's good politics to make uh, Canada the enemy? Yes. Because, yeah. and, and played into a joke I had pulled a lot on the radio over the years, mm. which was, uh, "Why don't we attack Canada? Because it's the last thing they'll expect." You know. Uh, oh, excuse me. We have a Canadian here. He's going to turn us over to the Mounties. <laughs> okay, let me do it. Huh? I'll, tell you, I'll tell you the first time that I ever heard that uh, in a in any sort of like where a sense that made me kind of poke my head up and go, "Huh?" was back when uh, George Bush Senior was uh, running for president, running for maybe the re-election, maybe it was, and he was talking about health care. And he was talking about, oh, if you uh, universal health care doesn't work, they always say it's so much better up in Canada, blah, blah, blah. If so, ask a Canadian. And I remember that hitting the news. And I was remember hoping I remember hoping that somebody would come up and ask me if I liked our health care because I did. But nobody ever did. It was just a, a good sound bite. Well, hello, Mandy. Uh, but anyway, uh, it, 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 Canadians uh, are just uh, they're it, they're too nice. You know, you're too nice. You apologize for everything. Yes. So sorry is a very common term in your language. Yes. And sorry. The stereotype is true. But that being said, there is still division and polarization up here, too. It's just. Well, different. actually, you're losing a little bit of. Can I say this? You're losing your cherry up there. Because I hear about things going on in Canada, which are kind of like reminiscent of what's going on down here. Well, the, the influence of the U.S. Uh, cannot be understated. I mean, has always been that. 
However, it is it is refreshing when there are some differences though that do separate the cultures, but the polarization is certainly something that's popping up here now. There's no question. Really? Yeah, very much so. Yeah. Very- you, you had a couple of mass shootings lately and things like that, right? I I don't know that the gun violence is 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 spiraling upwards, but certainly like when you look at uh, the pandemic, certainly viewed, there is a definitely an us versus them mentality and, and 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 that kind of thing. That like, I mean, you look at the uh, at the protest in Ottawa with the truckers and all that kind of stuff. That 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 isn't something that typically would have happened here. Yeah, yeah. So you, you're kind of losing that rather placid uh, reputation that you have had. We're still being polite to each other, though, sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> well, we've lost any sense of being polite, you know. And there's Mandy down in Georgia where they're voting now, right, Mandy? Yes, they are. Yeah? Yep. Yeah. I have not voted yet. I was going to go today, but I didn't get a chance, so maybe tomorrow. Well, there's advanced voting. And then wasn't there – Where? let's see here. The final voting day is what, the 3rd? Sixth. Oh, the sixth. No, that's actually the runoff date. The runoff date is the third. No, it's the sixth. The Tuesday. Sixth. Okay, it's a Tuesday. Yeah. Yeah, it's next Tuesday. So I, I think they may cut it off before the weekend. So. Yeah, yeah. I think they didn't want anybody doing it on the weekend. There was some arguments about that. You yes. Know. Right. Uh, they, uh, uh, but uh, anyway, at least this thing will be over with. How, how does it look down there? He Warnock's got a slight edge, according to the polls. So, yeah, yeah, yeah you know, I mean, it, it, you know, what is disappointing, I guess, is that he has a slight edge. I know, you yeah. know, it should be a massive edge because I mean, when you get a moron mm-hmm. like, like uh, Walker, it's amazing, you know, yeah. And isn't it refreshing that I can be that much against a particular candidate who is black without being called a racist? <laughs> because both of the people involved are are black. Yeah. This yeah. one happens to be the moron. It's, it's almost like, though, I kind of feel sorry for him now. I mean, he's being like anytime he's on TV, he's always surrounded by two white dudes. You know, they're just yes. kind of like, yes. Are, I feel sad for him. He's I like lost dignity. Warlock like. has an ad out, out right now, which is showing Walker with all his speeches and his confusion about how the air here goes to China and we get China's bad air. I mean, it's just one after another. Did he say that? Yes. yes. I mean, so in this Warlock ad, he's showing all this. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's a very, Great. very good ad. You should check it out. He's definitely not an orator. Even the, the zombies and the vampires, that one too is in the end? Yeah. No, it's uh, werewolves. That, yes, that's werewolves. zombies. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, right. what, what was this about werewolves? <laughs> he gave a speech about how where he found out that werewolves can kill vampires because he watched some movie on TV late night. Part of yeah. the campaign speech. Oh, well, then that's if good. you haven't seen it, you gotta you gotta you gotta YouTube it after this. So is, you, is you that won't saying, believe it. Is that saying that Walker is pro werewolf? Yeah. He seems to be, yes. Yeah. Okay. And apparently that's a pressing issue. I don't know. If I had a choice, okay, if I had a choice of having a friend who was either a werewolf or a vampire, <laughs> uh, I would take the vampire. Yeah, right? Mike's going, yeah. Vampires are well-dressed. Yes. That's just for starters. Mm-hmm. They have more a certain po- debonair po- quality about them. It's just They're right. more polite. Huh? They're more polite. Yeah. They're more polite. They last yeah. forever. Whereas werewolves are just fucking dogs without a collar, you know? <laughs> yeah, you never have to give a vampire a flea dip. Yeah, that's right. That's chance, right. It's... If you get a chance to watch this ad, you could probably Google yeah. it and see it. It's yeah. brilliant. And Warnock, I had one that was nice. It was like shown on Thanksgiving night. I think it may have just been shown that day, like that night when I was watching television and it was a very positive message. It didn't say anything about Herschel Walker. It was just saying, you know, look, we're a divided country. It's time to come together. You know, it was just, you know, he's just a very good speaker, obviously. Um, but and he's got good people. 
but it was just a, he even quoted a biblical verse at the end, you know, but it was very, it wasn't, it, it was very genuine to me. Well, you know, yeah. Uh, I mean, I just, I, what's just so, so screwy about all of this is that I've come to the conclusion that you remember when you were growing up, you go, anybody can, you know, you can grow up to be president. Anybody can be president. Right? And I don't think that's a very good idea now. Right. No. <laughs> you know? You're right. Well, anybody can be president. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, it's certainly Trump is, is, uh, uh, proof positive of that. I mean, yeah. before we had guys who had been actors, but I mean, re- re- to Ronald Reagan's credit, he had not been an actor, working actor for several years before he ran for president. So he didn't really he run. Didn't his name. Well, he was governor. He was yeah, governor. He, but he was a governor of a state. And so he had some chops. I didn't like Reagan, but he he certainly was qualified, I guess. Uh, uh George Bush Jr. had been a, you know, uh, uh, had he was been, a governor. He was a governor. He was a governor. Mm-hmm. You know, so these were people who had chops. Then you come along to somebody like a Trump and you go, what the hell happened here? You know, this is like you made some kind of, this is like you made some kind of parody movie, you know, yeah. of, oh, well, we're going to run a reality show host for president and then he wins and what it's like, you know. And actually, in the movie version, he would probably be a lot nicer, and it would probably come out a lot better. Yeah, right. Than it well, I mean, it's literally like it was. It was like a reality show. That's how he treated it. Like, let me just create drama every single day. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, you got to you got to give him credit. He knew how to. Knew, what was that? He knew how to get um, the press every day paying attention to him. How to monopolize the news cycle. Mm-hmm. You know, Zelensky, uh, the Ukrainian guy, um, mm-hmm. actually was a, 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 a he, he was a, 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 a character who who in a in a series in a TV series. Yeah, who who was uh, he who, was a comedian with, with that exact script. He yeah, and he became president, president of the, U- of the Ukraine. President. Yeah. Huh? What played a president? Well, no, but after, but beforehand, he was like a stand-up comic or something who then it becomes the the president of Ukraine, and it's all a parody. I mean, but eventually he did run and he did become president of Ukraine. <laughs> you so know, and he was, up until hmm? so could John Stewart run for president? I wish. I, well, I don't wish. <laughs> Have you, oh, seen right. his, have you seen his latest <laughs> show? He, he, he's getting a little long in the tooth with his opinion. Yeah, it's not good. You know, have you I'm seen his saying, latest show? He's yeah. getting long in the tooth about what? Who who saw it? What do you What do you think? Uh, I think it's entertaining. It's 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 more it's better more informative than the Daily Show was because he's not just out looking for the joke. Yeah. But it is long. I think I think half the topics could be done in half the time. Yeah, but I don't think I don't think he needs to be more political. I think the thing about the Daily Show was it was a comedy show with a political opinion, you know, yeah. and it wasn't trying to teach any lessons particularly, but it was out to make points. I mean, it was out to say this is wrong, this is right, but it was all comedy. This is kind of like I don't know what it's supposed to be. Yeah, I'm looking forward to who's next after Trevor Noah leaves. I'm tired of him. I never got into Trevor Noah. Trevor Noah. Anybody here watch Trevor Noah? His latest Netflix. uh, He has a Netflix. uh, uh, The the newest one is brilliant. Really, I have to watch it. Absolutely brilliant. It's funny. It's better than his show. Stand up, but I didn't like him in that context. In that Daily Show context. Uh, well, is it is it about a one is it a one act play? I mean, a, one person. No, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a concert. It's a, it's a stand up. Oh, okay. And it's it's he's wonderful. Yeah, he's a very I, good. I, I, I forget the, the name show of it, is but just too. I'm sorry. It's the latest one. What were you going to say, Andrew? I sorry, I didn't mean to talk over you, Paula. On on the Daily Show, he's just his guests are people I'm not interested in, and when he has them on, you would. Talks to nobodies as if they were the 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 kings of the universe in their field. And he's just it's all glad handing and oh, what's your journey, Alex? <laughs> it's 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 too uh yeah too too woke Gen Z nonsense with no 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 substance. Yeah, but you know, I mean I uh uh I just think it's uh you know 
it, it, that I never never could get into him on the Daily Show. I know I've seen him work and I like his work, but I didn't like. And on the Daily Show, I think he was pretty good when he did the monologue at the beginning of the show. But then when it got into the interviews and other stuff, it just it wasn't that good at it, you know. Certainly no John Stewart. No. But I think the problem with John Stewart now is he's no John Stewart. You know, I think he's lost that kind of edge that he had, mm-hmm. or he's just simply repeating that style he had before rather than letting it mutate. Yeah. You know? I think he's trying to be more politically effective than funny. Yeah. So it's yeah. Yes. It, that's where the change. The guy, the guy on YouTube to watch that's that's interesting. Have you seen Boa the Fifth Column? No. It's this fellow no. with he looks like like one of the Duck Dynasty guys, but he's a leftist who oh, does yeah. probably the strongest research you'll ever see mm-hmm. in covering topics in short short form, two or three videos a day. What you would it? really like him, Alex. Boa. Bo of the fifth column, B-E-A-U. Oh, of the Bo fifth of column. the fifth column. The, He's the a guy, southern guy, right? He he is, but he 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 looks like a guy that you would expect to be talking Trump bullshit. Right. And he's from the opposite side of the fence, and he's brilliant. I would. He's one of those guys I would love to meet and just have a have a chat. So he's are so you well prepared and so uh, insightful and completely fact based? So are you like me? Are you kind of hooked on uh, YouTube? No. Certain I am. Things. I sit there and I just go from one YouTube clip to another to another. I go, go now, oh, that one I like. Okay, I'll watch that for a little bit. And go, I, I, I'll watch that for a little bit. I find if I never had any other TV, but I had YouTube, I'd be happy. I, I use it more for stuff that I need to learn how to do on like the renovation of the house I'm doing. Yeah. I had stuff and educational things with, with experts so I can see techniques I've never used. Well, Marjorie, never... Marjorie loves a show called Grand Design out of England. I'm we talking more that. structural. Which is about like... people who t- decide they're going to build their own home. And every one of them <clears throat> wind up spending more money than they ever thought they would spend. And they all have issues. And they all have issues and some divorces and, you know, whatever. <laughs> and uh, this one guy completely built his house himself using YouTube to teach him how to do it. Yeah. Uh, Awesome. Yeah. And anything you want to know how to do, you just put in, you know, I don't know how to, uh, I, ha- I have a cavity. I don't know how to drill my own tooth. You know, <laughs> I put that in there and you, you get a video on it. You know, here's mm-hmm. how you do it. But so you found that using YouTube, you could actually fix your house or, you know. There's, well, I, I know how to do a lot of stuff, but like, for example, I had to, to melt the lead fittings on, on old, on an old stack in the house to pull out the pipes to put yeah. in new new rough plumbing. And I'd never done that before. So I watched someone do it and went, oh, okay, I could do that. Wow. Just sit in the basement with a torch on on my, literally with a flaming shit pipe. Yeah. <laughs> well, I know. Was, you know, it's, it's yeah. educational and you get, you can see experts and tradesmen and craftsmen do things. Um, I'm doing all my own wiring and had a couple of questions about GFC. I've, I learned that with two certified electricians on YouTube. You know, it's interesting. I was um, um, I, I was watching the other night, some guy who interviewed Quentin Tarantino, uh, and he was pretty good doing the interview, I have to admit. Um, but he asked him, one of the things was, what did you think of Alfred Hitchcock? And what do you think Quentin Tarantino said? Overrated? Yep. Not <laughs> overrated. He just said, I wasn't that crazy about him. But then he related it to the fact that he had to work under the movie code and he couldn't see how anybody could stand to work under that kind of system. Okay. And then he started talking about certain movies that he went, well, this movie was good and this movie was good and this movie was good. So he really didn't not like him. But I just found it interesting that he didn't go, oh, that was one of the best directors ever because that's the kind of director you would watch. And even though you wouldn't, you know, apply a lot of things that he did to present day rules. Uh, you would take watch him as a master class on how to shoot a film, you know, how to structure a film. I mean, there was some good stuff to be learned there. So I would have thought Tarantino's this big movie buff would have said the best ever, but no, he didn't. You know, 
But that that was another thing I was watching. Uh, how you doing, Len LaFrisco? You seem a little quiet today, uh, reserved. Uh, yeah, a little tired. Uh, I had the same sort of situation with you on Thanksgiving, and my wife was not feeling well. I ended up spending six hours in the emergency room with her, so that was fun. Really? What was wrong yeah. with her? What was uh, wrong? She was having a hard time breathing. She's just been coughing and congested, test negative for everything. She just had... She was just had a hard time moving the air in and out of her lungs. So took her to the ER. They did a couple of breathing treatments and some steroids. And, you know, she's on the mend, but it was a long day. Wow. Well, what happened with us, I'll tell the story because Marjorie is not ready and willing to tell the story, was that we had, she every year has been ordering from Fresh Direct or as I call it, the easy way to make Thanksgiving dinner. In other <laughs> words, they send you all the stuff, the sides, the cranberries, the uh, pecan pie or whatever you want, you know, the whole the whole mishigas. And then the turkey is half cooked. So then you put it and they pop it in the oven for a couple hours and it's done, right? Uh, and she did that. How many years in a row did you do that, Marjorie? Just hold fingers up, will you? How many? How many you years? Can hold one up. I, I know that. a lot. <laughs> a couple of years, two years, three years, maybe. Yeah. 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 So uh, much. My and it's a, in the turkey. I and still it, make my stuffing. Yeah. I yeah. Still do stuff. You still do stuff, but it makes it easier for you overall. So she ordered it, and she ordered it, Marjorie, to her nature and to her uh, credit, ordered it a month ago. Two All months. Right. Huh? Two months? Oh, I think that was a mistake. That was the mistake. But anyway, she ordered two months ago. It's supposed to be here on Tuesday between, I don't know, you know, three and four or something like that. Doesn't show up. Then she gets a message from about that evening from Fresh Direct saying, uh, well, we couldn't deliver your uh, your uh, uh, turkey. Uh, we canceled it. We can't. So we've canceled it. <laughs> what? And we've got like five people coming over to dinner, seven people total. Oh. And um, so now Marjorie calls them and they go, oh, well, we'll, uh, uh, oh, they, they then put in there, uh, you have to reorder it. So she reorders it and they can deliver it at, are you ready for this? Mm-hmm. On Thanksgiving Day. Around one o'clock. One, o'clock, one o'clock or two o'clock. <laughs> Are di- people coming for dinner at at uh, at uh, uh, at four? So she's now on the phone to them the next day, and they go, "Oh, well, we're so sorry about that." No, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. And then they say, "Oh, well, just because you ordered two months ago doesn't mean you're going to be at, at the head of the line." <laughs> what? <laughs> So what happened was she kept complaining that day, and they said, well, it'll be over between 10 and 1. 1 o'clock comes, 1 o'clock goes, no turkey. She then calls them back. They go, oh, whoops, sorry about that. We'll have it out to you in 45 minutes. 45 minutes comes and goes, and there's still no turkey. Jesus. So, you know, now she calls them and yells at them, and they go, well, we have to deliver the one tomorrow. And it just, you know, I'm we're going, what is this all about? And then finally, the next day, uh, it does come at about 11 o'clock in the morning. And by then, she had already gone down to uh, Whole Foods and bought a turkey. Well, sure. You know. But on Wednesday, on Wednesday, you're literally getting the bottom of the barrel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was a, that was a pretty, that was a pretty tough turkey. It you know, tough. it lived a rough life. <laughs> and, and it didn't want to die particularly, but you know, especially for our table. But anyway, so uh, and when I was cutting it up, I, you you have me, you know, carve the turkey. Well, I'm, I probably could have used that saw you bought, that electric one, because <laughs> man, it was, it was rough, rough going. But anyway, so we had that one, and so Marjorie, but the night. Uh, two nights before she didn't sleep at all she was like you know she was so worried about this and then the next day it was this and that and the other thing finally they she calls on 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 uh, 
what was it done on Thursday or something to talk to them. And they say, well, we have no record of anything going on with you and us yesterday on Wednesday. And this was the time when they said 45 minutes to, 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 to four, three o'clock in the afternoon, whatever. I mean, it was just, it, it was that by the time she got to Thanksgiving dinner, this woman was exhausted. So let's all give her a round of applause. <laughs> I think that's really? how I got sick, Alex. Yeah, I think that's how she got sick. Yeah. I really think so. Yeah. yeah. And so uh, then she wrote, she, what'd you call them or something? Or Rome, and they gave her a $50 credit. You know, what, another $50 credit for a meal that's going to be late? Come on. You know. Um, but anyway, um, we, uh, and then I, I also wrote them myself. And then they said, we'll have her call us and, We'll make good on this deal. You know? Yeah, sure. But I mean, yeah. to, to me, if I ran a company and I were you know, sending food out to people who were going to have it as their Thanksgiving meal, and uh, you figure they're going to have people over there like family and so on, you go out of your way to make sure that these things get out there and that people are taken care of. They took too many orders and they couldn't provide. Yeah. So there's Charlie. Hello, Charlie. Hi, hey, Charlie. You watching the moon at all? Not right now. No. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> who, who did he moon? I I constantly turn that turn uh, those uh, things on on YouTube, looking for the latest footage those, of the moon. Those pictures with the moon in the foreground and the Earth in the background. Are oh, incredible. just just incredible. Uh, it's just a matter of I'm waiting for the, the the capsule to come back because they've got all the GoPro footage on it that will look a lot better than it did with it sending the signal, mm. you know, and and they're going to have some wonderful stuff to show us at that point, you know. So it's really nice. Uh, yes, uh, yes, uh, yes, uh, Jeff. Well, of course, we had our special special. Turkey. And you didn't have not a turkey. You told me what you had the other night. It was you a, were going to have it was scallops. Scallops. Oh, they were the, fantastic. The, the 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 traditional Thanksgiving scallop. <laughs> Native American, New England, New England, American, New England <laughs> things that they ate. Yeah, yeah. Did you lay them in the they form had of a no turkey? turkeys. What what did you say? Andrew? I was wondering if he laid him on the plate to look like a turkey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a carrot for a beak, you know. You know, so you had scallops. What did you do, Mandy? I'm sure you either went somewhere or did it yourself, right? Well, uh, it's funny you should ask now. Um, I attempted to make a ham like I've never cooked a okay. ham. Yeah. Um, and so my sister was laughing at me. It was just my sister, my mom, and myself. We had very low-key um, meal. My sister did everything else and brought it over to my house. I was very mm -hmm. excited to have something in my new house. My mom even got to come and, um, I put the ham in for like 15 minutes. <laughs> 15 minutes. Oh, well, this is oh, already an already cooked ham, right? It, I think so, but oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> I, yes. Yes. Disclaimer, I am not a cook at all. When I was married, my ex-husband did always did the big cooking, like whenever we had Thanksgiving, Christmas, all that stuff, barbecues, he did it all. I just never, I don't have any interest in cooking. So yeah, my sister was like, you don't know how to eat a ham? I said, because it was supposed to be 15 minutes per pound. Oh, <laughs> And it was like almost three pounds. So we had to put it in for like 30 more minutes, but it was all right. I mean, I'm just not a big ham fan anyway. I'm not even sure why we had ham. Usually most of the hams you buy now, especially the ones you can get at Costco, are already cooked. And all you're yeah. doing is warming them up. Yeah. But if you took one that was raw and you had to cook it, I'm no. sure after, after you know, an hour's worth of cooking a five-pound ham, uh, it was not kosher. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty sure that's safe. <laughs> Yeah. It was not baked ham. I mean, it was a boar's head, but it like I had to put the glaze on it, and it just didn't really turn out as good as like a honey baked. You know, it was, just, <laughs> it was all right. Yeah, but but that, that you can do. You can instead of having a turkey, you can have a ham. You know, and some yeah. some people when I've gone to Thanksgiving dinners also had your choice of turkey or ham. 
-hmm. or both actually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would have had something else, you know, prime rib or something. I don't know. I, my mom had already had Turkey at her assisted living place. So she's like, yeah, let's have ham. So we kind of did it for her, but my sister made deviled eggs and a really good salad and scalloped potatoes and rolls. And oh, all that's that. nice. That's nice. <laughs> Except you know, you know what? What is what is it that uh, Natalia makes, Marjorie? Nice Russian one, salad. One, Russian salad. Well, he she does Russian salad, which is very good. And then she she makes a flan cake, which I've made. It's delicious. Yeah, the flan cake. Her flan cake is just to die for. But you put the ingredients in, and then you can even watch it as it cooks because the stuff on the bottom rises to the top. Yeah, it has kind of a cake bottom on it, and then it has a flan top, and it's really yeah. good. And she does it with what? Some kind of liqueur or liquor or whatever she puts in there. And it was really good. It's really good. And there's one more piece left, and I'm going to have it tonight. No, no, because I haven't <laughs> had it yet. What? I haven't had any yet. Well, there's only one piece left. Well, that's mine. You took the other one. <laughs> well, if, if, if you don't, if, if what do you mean it's yours? If you don't eat it soon, it's not going to be a flan cake. It's going to be a stale piece of bread. Oh, okay, Roger, do it on camera. <clears throat> yeah. I've been sick. I haven't been able to eat. Well, you're not, uh, you're not going to eat it tonight? Oh, it's um... Just about okay. Well, when you go to look for it tomorrow, it's not going to be there. You know that. <laughs> You're going to be in trouble, Terry. You are going to be in trouble. Well, I mean, come on. It it's really that good that I'm willing to take the hit on it. You know. <laughs> I mean, what what she what's she going to do? You know. Enjoy the guest room, Alex. Yeah, really. Not not clean the house. She never cleans the house. <laughs> Not when you can hire somebody to do it, right? Are you going to be able to fit a bed in your office? You got to go to sleep sometimes. Yeah, a bed in my office. <laughs> well, I did make sausage balls yesterday. I should have just had sausage balls instead of the ham. I mean, it was the same family. I oh, make, now you say you don't cook, but I imagine you make sausage balls. Well, that was the one thing. You know, at first I was always the one that just brought tea or ice, you know? Yeah. I got bumped up. To, oh, she can make sausage balls. So when we would have our Christmas, <laughs> you bumped up to sausage. Oh, 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 the, oh, the, uh, sausage. I never heard of uh, sausage balls. Yeah. <laughs> well, it, it can be used as a pejorative and, statement. And none, of you, and none of you guys had anything to say about that. I'm I, I, I knew there's a. I knew there's Italian. It was guy. just too easy, Paula. <laughs> I think that was the nickname for Donald Trump's old sausage <laughs> ball. <laughs> I just have to say that that uh, I have a young friend who said uh, for Thanksgiving, he said we uh, I smoked a brisket and I said, is that what they're calling it these days? <laughs> <laughs> so, sausage was why do they call them sausage testicles? That would be nice. <laughs> Obviously, you roll them into little balls. It's sausage, bisquick, and cheese, shredded cheese, and they're oh, so good. Wow, really? really? Sausage <laughs> ring. Kind of yeah, let me yeah. get. That. Sausage bisquick. Yes. So they're kind of bready. You not you know what I mean? Oh, I see. Are you, yeah. Okay. When you're talking about the bisquick, you're talking about using the powder. powder. Yeah. So you kind of just mix it all together and just make little sausage balls and you bake them. And mm -hmm. they're just they're just not greasy. You know, they're like kind of a I don't know, it's hard to describe. They're very good. And very gentile, I might add. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> If you're a Jew, you're not supposed to eat sausage. So, you know, yeah. why is it that as a Jew, I've always liked ribs, <laughs> pork ribs and sausage, as long as you, sausages? What? As long as you I'm circumcise sure. the pig, you're all right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> okay. I never I heard that, that, but you may be right. Of those things, too. What? I said, I don't know about you, but as a Jew, but as a Canadian, I've always loved those things, too. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, I, I'm going to try and figure that one out. No, no, no. Something uh, about he likes to dip his balls in uh, Bisquick. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. That's all I heard. I don't know. You say, why as a Jew do I enjoy the ribs and the bacon and all that, that stuff? I'm just telling you as a Canadian, I enjoy those things too. Yeah. I, I, okay. I have to admit, They're I delicious. Like why you love them. The sweaty balls with stick. Uh, sweaty balls. Sweaty balls, <laughs> yeah. 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 So funny. But anyway, uh, and and Charlene, how did you spend? Charlene, how did you spend? Uh, oh, she's talking to somebody. There we go. Um, I spent Thanksgiving here at home with my family and my son, who's right here. You can see that's Joey. Hi, Joey. Hi. How are you? 
Good to see um, you. He made everything from scratch. Oh. Everything. The jerky, the cornbread dressing from scratch, uh, green bean casserole, uh, what do you call it? Cranberry um, sauce. Mm -hmm. sauce from scratch. Yeah. Pie, pepper pies from scratch. He's an excellent cook. Did anybody make a turkey or did you just eat all oh, the yeah. sides? You need the turkey too. Oh, oh. <laughs> and biscuits. See, I always love cooking the turkey, uh, but I don't do it anymore because Marjorie goes, oh, you can't do it as good as I do it. You know, mm -hmm. so I just let her live with that myth, you know, mm -hmm. but I made a pretty good turkey. I had a whole method for my turkey. And uh, well, men are better cooks. My brother's a chef. And that's where we went last year. We went to his restaurant. Mm -hmm. So I was like, can't we just do that again? <laughs> why are men or why do we assume? See, I'm trying to be politically correct here. Why do we assume that men are better cooks and yet women spend their whole life, you know, cooking? Yeah. I or being know. expected to cook. Because it was never, women were never allowed in professional kitchens. Yeah. Was <laughs> that the reason? So Julia Child. Yeah. Julia Child taught a whole generation of us how to cook. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Really? Really? Well, she taught, no, you know what she taught people, uh, the women in America, how to cook? Is awesome. how to cook professionally. How to not just cook, you know, like mom, moms can make uh, chicken and they can make fish and they can make this and that. They can make the basics. But for doing cuisine, she empowered women to do cuisine, I think. That's what she did. And also how to drop a whole roast on the floor while you're cooking it. <laughs> putting it right back in the oven. <laughs> putting it right back in the it's oven. It's your kitchen. Well, Nobody can see. <laughs> well, also, let, let's, for for giggles sake, say that it does fall on the floor. And it's down there for more than the five-second rule time. Uh, okay? <laughs> and you pick it up, and you put it in the thing, and you cook it. Once you cook it, if you there are any bacteria that it picked up, the, they're dead. Yeah. yeah. I'm thinking it was been more been through more than that than just falling on the floor. Imagine what go where it's been, you know, to get to your plate. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So Edward Berger, how did you spend your Thanksgiving? I spent a few days up at my niece. Really? She handles Thanksgiving and everything. Isn't where, it nice when other it? people handle Thanksgiving? Yeah, that's right. You know, Other, otherwise I have to go to Ben's and uh, give them sixty-five dollars, and I. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the thing is about um, uh, Marjorie is that we never get invited anywhere to Thanksgiving. We have to hold our own Thanksgiving. You know, so it's always here, and it's a lot of work for her. I mean, she really she takes it. She takes holding a meal seriously. You know. And uh, we always have a starter and we always have the main course and we always have a dessert. And usually she does all of them. She's an excellent cook. She is. She's a that very good cook. The only person in this house that's better cook than her is me. <laughs> well, you've never, you know, you've never oh, let me really cook. Oh, okay. Uh, what, what were you going to say? We you guys are invited for next year <laughs> for our house. There you go. So remember, we're, we're gonna eat. Oh, oh, for no turkey. It. No, we're not having scallops. I'm sorry. We're staying down in New York. You know, uh, but uh, uh, but Marjorie, Marjorie doesn't really let me. Well, I uh, it doesn't let me cook. I have a few things that I do cook, and. Um, you know, like, for instance, I have this new chicken dish that I make. It's very good. You have to admit it's good. Right, Marjorie? Well, here we go. <laughs> what? It's not good? It's good, Alex. How many times do I have to tell you it's good? <laughs> See, what I used to like, I'll tell you what I used to like. Was it to okay? Do. Was it okay? I, what I used to like to do when I was single and happy. Uh, <laughs> is, you are is I, yourself today. Is I used to take um, uh, what I used to like to do was to go to a very you know a cookbook. I usually like this the art of cooking because there's a lot of stuff in there. Okay, and then pick a dish that looked good. You know, brandy this or this with that and whatever, mm -hmm. and just. Spend a whole day doing a particular uh, 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 
what do you call it, recipe. And uh, that that I used to enjoy doing. And I got a pretty good repertoire going that mm. way. But then you get married and they want to cook. Marjorie likes to cook. Well, actually, what she likes to do is order from a fresh direct. Uh, and we, we, we order most of our food now, don't we? Well, since COVID, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, we, we don't cook very much, you know. Well, I make my chicken once in a while. Yeah, yeah, uh, she does. We uh, make her ribs. Or we go down to Popeye's. Yeah, so... <laughs> Anyway, Wait, two two single pe two people who are married to each other don't have any kids in the house or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Very similarly to a bachelor, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, we don't really go out of our way to, you know, like Charlie. Do you make your own dinner at home? No, no. See, I used to. I I used to like doing that. I, uh, well, Mike, you're, you're still married. Do Anybody here else single? Nah, nah. Except, mm. oh, well, oh, wait a minute, Mandy. Well, Mandy, you don't cook. Yeah. Exactly. So, it, wait, I get to eat whatever I want. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do cook sometimes. Like, I, my kids always made fun that, you know, like, you know how to cook spaghetti and pork chops and <laughs> salmon and chicken. You know, I like when you're talking about Julia Child, like, I knew how to do the basic stuff, but they basically made fun of me all the time. Yeah. But, I mean, a lot of times I just eat snacks for dinner, like yeah. well, lunch, you, a big meal, and then I eat just snacky stuff that when I get home. Marjorie's main thing, her main gift in life is, are soups. Mm. Soups, Ooh. soups. She Love makes good soup. she makes great, uh, for instance, uh, um, pea soup, really wonderful mm. pea soup. She makes what else? What other kind of soups do you do, Marjorie? French onion soup from scratch. Yeah, from scratch. Nice. Uh, but what's well, the hard part is getting the French onions. Uh, but uh, she, she, so her soups. But what the trouble with her making soups is, she's got these giant kettles. You know, the kind they use in the <laughs> army to feed the entire troop. <laughs> right? She's got one of, those, and she makes that much soup. And then when we yes. we've had two bowls of it, right? The rest of it goes into these little containers, and for the rest of the month, she's passing them out to people like they're gifts from having dropped by. You know, I think has she ever made you any take home any Paul Aunt Paula? No, but I've enjoyed it at your table, and they're, they're those soups are delicious. They're really good. They're delicious, but I think, and I said to her, she said, "Oh, I can't make them any smaller than the big giant pot." I'm going. Just measure in half of everything you put in, and then it'll be less. But she won't do it. She's got to have this big giant. Um, you should see the pots. If, they, if I weren't stuck here, I'd bring one in and show it to you. You go, my God. She's huh? a soup factor, also. Yeah, but she's really good at her soups. That's her. That's her. Uh, would you say that's your specialty, Marjorie? That's what I love making in stews. Well, stews are kind of a soup, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, in a they're, way. They're just kind they're of a thick, 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 yeah. thick version. Uh, I like that. Um, what was it somebody said about your soups, that they shouldn't be considered soups, they should be considered stews because they're that thick and that mm -hmm. full of, you know, stuff. But no, you do a great job of it here. Thank you. you. Know? Um, but, uh, you know, otherwise, uh, and, and, you know, it, and then I do great dishes, by the way. I'm very good at dishes. Uh, what I mean is putting them in the dishwasher and then turning on the dishwasher. So that's what I'm very good at when it comes to a meal. And that's unloading it. Huh? Unloading it. And unloading it. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I do all the dishes. I do all the dishes because Joey does all the cooking. So I do all the dishes. Really? I, you know, I hate to say this. It, it, it sounds strange, but I don't mind uh, emptying the dishwasher. It's something I somewhat enjoy i don't know why it, Alex, it, my, what was that one of your chores growing up no oh, no it it was when he grew up no i never had no, chores no, when i was growing up i was spoiled dishes. what i mean washing the dishes no okay well of For course me, when i grew up when i grew up we didn't have a dishwasher they used to beat their dishes on a rock <laughs> <in> the river <laughs> 
done. <laughs> Definitely. And and happy to be able to do it too. You know? Dude, how I cook meals. <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, I, I've heard, Charlie, you make incredible reservations. <laughs> well, I, I uh, uh, when when I divorced uh, Ronnie, when Ronnie divorced me, uh, when she left, uh, I found that I was completely at the mercy of another human being when it came to food, when it came to like sewing clothes and, you know, mending clothes and things like that. So I taught myself how to do all those. Alex, things. I've never seen you pick up a needle and thread, ever. <laughs> I don't even think you could thread a needle. You, you take the thread and you put it through that little eye at the top. And then you tie it up at the other end and then you start sewing. And there are different stitches, which I also know how to do. Okay. I just pretend like I don't know how to do them because I'd rather have somebody else do them for me. Better. Yeah. <laughs> Teach you how to knit burger? your own sweaters. Burger, what did you do? And don't tell me you had burgers for Thanksgiving. Oh, we had official turkey and stuffing and all that stuff. Yeah, really? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you don't have hamburgers, for instance? Well, not, not, not for Thanksgiving. Are you famous for the burger burger? And, uh, maybe I don't know. <laughs> now, well, how about you? Are you you're are you married? Yeah. Me? No. Yeah. No. Oh. No. That's why I go to my niece. Otherwise, my wife would do it. Bad one. Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever been married? Uh, no. <laughs> how old are you? Old. Seventy. You're seventy, yeah. and you've never been married. Nope. Congratulations. That's right. <laughs> Congratulations. Because, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, to get this far and not having been married, That's do you miss right. it at all? Do you miss it at nah, all? Nah. And the, and the only other reason he isn't married is um, just so everybody can get an idea of what you're like in a romantic situation, say, I love you. I love you. No. Yeah, it's, it's just, yeah, yeah. No, it's just not yeah, going to make yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. Gonna make it. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I don't know. I, I think I, my problem was I was the kind of person who got terminally married. You know, I mean, I've been married four times. Marjorie's been married. I'm her, I'm her third. I'm and, his fourth. Uh, yeah. Seven marriages and no right. kids, which is interesting. Seven marriages and no kids. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, uh, we, we, you and I, in that respect, are selfish. Right. <laughs> I, I mean, I would have done OK with kids. It just would have changed my whole disposition, <laughs> you know, and I don't think I would have had the career I had if I had kids, because I would be thinking more about them when I decided whether I was going to keep a job or not keep a job and what kind of job I would get. I was in a very insecure business. <laughs> And so being in an insecure business and having kids is not a winning thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, anyway, I'm glad to hear you all had, you all seem to have your uh, own kind of, now you said, Charlie, that you went where for Thanksgiving? I was here. In fact, there. I watched the Cowboys Giants game 15 times. <laughs> oh, yes, you did. <laughs> And for you didn't have turkey then? No, I had ham on my pizza, ham and sausage. <laughs> the traditional Thanksgiving ham and sausage pizza. That's great. Well, I'm glad you all had a, a nice Thanksgiving in one way or another. And uh, 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 yeah, everybody here seems like they enjoyed themselves, uh, in, including uh, Mandy, who doesn't cook. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you don't cook, what? Oh, you bring your sausage balls. That's what you bring. <laughs> and her sister. So do I. Yeah, and my sister's known me my whole life, and she acted so shocked that I didn't. I was like, "Hello, how many times did you come to my house?" And I was not cooking. <laughs> <laughs> Forget. But she, you know, she was just laughing at me. She's like, "Don't you know how to make a ham?" I'm like, no. Yeah. Well, anyway, hey, listen, very nice to see all of you once again this week. I don't know what happened to Shecky. 
but I'll find out after the show is over. I'm a little worried yeah. about him because he's. I hope everything's well for him. He's uh, he's usually pretty good about this. And I talked to him two days ago. He said I'll talk to you on Monday. You mm. know, so. mm. Anyway, uh, uh, I'll talk to him and see where he is. But Charlene, oh, let me say something because this affects pretty much not Mandy, but pretty much the rest of us. There's a great documentary on polio um, because it really came about. I mean, we grew up with kids in iron lungs. Do you yeah. remember Drew Heller, Paula? Yes, he indeed. Died. He died of polio. Mm -hmm. I mean, we all grew up with that. I remember you couldn't go in the water in August. Mm. All, those, went, all those, all those, all those suppositions though were wrong. Yeah, mm -hmm. Alex, where do we see it? Was that it's on PBS? It's on PBS. Oh, American it's Experience. Really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, well, it, you know, I mean, basically it goes back to what I've been saying for years is that polio was not a result of things being filthy, but things being too clean. Yeah, yeah except polio was all over the world, Alex. Yeah, but it, but it was too clean. It, everybody around the world was cleaning up and, and kids were being born without the antibodies they had once gotten as natural immunities. And one of them was polio. And so consequently, kids were getting, that's why it was infantile paralysis. That's why it's basically hit kids. That's basically why it was so terrible. You know, parents losing children to this, just horrible. Just and and there were iron lungs, remember? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway, I want to thank Charlene. I want to thank Andrew. You're very, always very funny. And uh, your uh, your background is always very realistic. So I appreciate that. Uh, Len the Frisco, I'm glad to hear your wife's okay and out of the woods. But boy, that was must have been scary okay. for a little bit. Yeah. You, know, not, you probably thought good. she had COVID, right? You yeah, know. I mean, they tested her for all that stuff, and it was all negative. So yeah. <laughs> oh. Andrew, really? Look at Andrew. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing that was missing, Andrew, That's something was to say. <laughs> I wish you could send me some of those backgrounds. I could play with them. Uh, anyway, uh, oh, oh, geez. Oh, oh, yeah, the dogs and uh, uh, yeah. Okay. Um, uh huh. Oh, there we go, Mr. There President. There we go, Mr. President. Okay. Anyway, uh, thank you to uh, Len Lafrisco and thank you to Paul Eleven, also known as Paula Twelve, uh, <laughs> and our kids, Paula Thirteen. And Paul. Anyway, and Marjorie Miller, thank you for being with us in spite of the fact that you're still sick. And um, uh, Jeff Stein, hope you enjoyed those scallops. Very right. delicious. <laughs> Mike Chisholm, up there in Canada. Hey, eh? I know you, not once in the show today, and I have to give you credit, did you pull the old Canadian thing of, well, we had ours two months ago. <laughs> <laughs> That's what, really hard to sell. Yeah. When 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 is your Thanksgiving up there? It's uh like the second Monday of October. Okay. So anyway. Yeah. And uh, Mandy O'Brien, always a pleasure to have you here and to uh hear about your your recipes. And uh Charlie Wallace, you're terrific too. And now it's time for Edward Berger to say goodbye with his usual sign off, which is That's all folks. And ladies and gentlemen, have a, have a nice week. See you next week. Bye-bye. Okay.